Meet Ohio State's new interim running backs coach. His name is Ryan Day. These are snap judgments. They're brought to you by Byers Auto. That's Bill Landis, Jeremy Birmingham. I'm Austin Ward. Ryan Day made it two whole practices, Bill. And he's right back leading a position group again. Yeah, what you ask him, can you not help yourself? <laughs> yeah. Are you addicted to coaching a position group? Uh, he seemed very excited by it, right? He had a big old smile on his face, talking about walking into that uh, running back room and going over one play for like 20 minutes. Um, I don't think that's normal for running backs. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't They're think out that's... here for an hour and a half, <laughs> yeah. so I'm not sure that's the most effective use of their time. It's probably not. Um, but I, he, the thing that he said about like teaching the running backs from a quarterback's perspective, I actually did think was was kind of interesting. Like, it's not an ideal situation, right? I also don't think it's any reason to like press the panic button. They do have plenty of time here to find somebody because I, I think when you're making these decisions, Berm, like the most important thing is probably the recruiting aspect of it. And it's like guys are visiting, but it's not like decision time. It's not a portal time, so they have a little bit of runway um, to figure out who's going to be the next running backs coach here. But yeah, in the meantime, it's uh, it's Ryan Day running the room and coaching on the field on spring practice number three. There are positions where like you worry about, okay, how is this guy as a technical developer of a position? How does this guy teach left guard? R running back is not that way, okay? You find Perfect. the best running yeah. back, you find the best running back, and you give him the football and you let him run. Like that's all they really do. Yeah, you can teach a guy how to get a little better in pass pro. You can teach a guy how to maybe be a more effective route runner, but like, when you're hiring a running back coach, you are hiring a recruiter. Um, and Tony Alford was pretty good at that for the majority of his career at Ohio State. And so that's what you're looking to replace. And when Ryan Day starts to look down the list, I mean, I don't think it was a coincidence that the first names we heard were Tashar Joyce, Robert Gillespie, DeMarco Murray. Like, those are the best recruiting running back coaches in the country. And those are the guys Ohio State's going to be looking at. As he talked about pretty extensively, he's not hurrying. He's excited about conversations they've already had. You did get the sense, or I got the sense anyway, that this was probably over by the end of this week. He, yeah, he, it wasn't even really subtle. Yeah, I mean, there was, was at one point he said, like, you know, we'll have some resolution on this at the end of the week and we'll get back, you know, on that and we'll see what happens. I mean, the, the top options are obvious for yeah. Ohio State at this point. We know who they are, we know what Ohio State is going to pay, we know what they have to offer in terms of personnel and opportunity and recruiting. Uh, pitches and all that moving forward. Like how many how many times did Ryan Day mention how exciting it would be to coach the best running back room in America? Like he's selling us on it. It's like what I'll was, do it. Let me do it. I'll do it. What was interesting though is that he said, and, and this is not normal, but obviously hiring a coach in the middle of spring is not normal either. So the opportunity for the players to kind of be involved in the interview process is yeah. something that I think is unique in this situation. Um, uh, and I. If you're looking at guys like DeMarco Murray, for example, he was extremely involved in Travion Henderson's recruitment coming out of high school. So um, it, it is interesting, at least, that it would make that connection a little stronger as that decision gets Well, made. if that's the sales pitch, Bill, it's like, well, let me let me loop these guys into the Zoom right here. Here's Travion Henderson, <laughs> and that's Quinshawn Jenkins. Do you remember Dow and Hayden? Uh, would you like to coach these guys? Yeah. yeah I think that's, that's a pretty useful tool. So that's ongoing. We've talked about the running backs and the coach coaching vacancy there enough. Let's move past it a little bit if we can. Uh, what else got your attention on Tuesday as the Buckeyes got back to work? We did not see that. It was completely yep. closed on Tuesday morning, but we did hear from Ryan Day afterwards. Still like kind of slow rolling the quarterback stuff, I think. Uh, Burn Burn asked about that, like, like, what are you doing with the guys? Are you still splitting up reps? And Ryan Day said they're rolling them, which, which I take to mean like they're not really paying much attention to who's out there with first team, second team, third team. They're just kind of going through, running through plays and if Julian Sain's out there with the first team offense, then, then so be it. And then they'll, I, I think, be more intentional about that as they move forward. The, the pads came on today, which like kind of ramps things up a little bit, but it was still only a 90 minute practice, a, a shorter one um, for them. They'll have longer practices Thursday, Saturday, more hitting, I'm assuming more scrimmaging. Um, so I think like next week will be maybe, be maybe a better time to get more clarity on that and some other positions we can talk about. But if you were wondering like, or Will Howard and Devin Brown like getting all the first team reps right now? I think they're not quite there yet. That's why I don't understand the schedule. As well, they I don't recall they, ever seeing Ryan Day or Urban Meyer or any other coach when they talk about rolling reps. I, I don't remember ever accidentally seeing a true freshman out there yeah. with the ones. I, I don't think that's ever happened. I, but that's what pisses me off about the schedule. <laughs> okay, like today became acclimation day number three because they just got back from spring break. So yeah. it's only a 90 minute practice. They're not going as heavy. Like the whole point of the first couple of days of the acclimation period is so that by practice three, you can be hitting people. You're acclimatized. Right, you're, you're acclimatized. <laughs> And so now they're not acclimatized, and here we are having to wait. It's like, come on, man. What, 
Imagine how much better spring break would have been for Ohio State this year had they not started practice two weeks ago and lost their running backs coach in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, they would have lost their running backs coach before spring practice, and then we wouldn't have to worry about Tony Alford stealing playbooks. Are you worried about that? No, no one should be either. Um, we were kind of like joking about that and how this year it felt more unusual to me than it has in years past. It was the first time I really thought about the schedule and the setup. I'm like, I don't know if I agree with it. And then last week happened and it's like, let's, let's get rid of let's that never setup. never do that again. Because yeah. it's wasted now an additional day and setback. I, don't, I, don't, I guess I don't know if it set back the running backs or not if Ryan Day is in there teaching them how to play That's quarterback. That's the best room in America. Yeah, yeah so I guess, I guess they'd probably be okay because Travion and Quinshawn are both pretty talented already. So yeah. I bet they'll survive. You, Bill, a little curveball from you, wanted to know something about the offensive line. Wanted to change things up today, ask an <laughs> offensive line question. Um, I'm just trying to like get a better understanding of how they're viewing the right side of the offensive line. And <clears throat> Ryan Day like sort of simultaneously said, like, we don't know because we just put the pads on. We have to wait and see. We start hitting people how the offensive line shakes out. But then also, like in the same breath, I, I think made it very clear that they would very much like Josh Fryer to be the team's right, right tackle. And mentioned Josh Fryer had an incredible offseason. Um, I think he's done that maybe a couple times now, uh, the last few times we've talked to him. And they want to see that carry over now through these remaining, what, 12 practices, I guess, um, to really solidify that spot so I think that they can just focus on right guard. But then even that I found a little bit puzzling because I don't know how much there is to focus on if the three guys we think are in the competition are Josh Fryer, Luke Montgomery, and Tegra Shibola. And then I asked Ryan Day, like, do you view all three of those guys as guys who can play guard or tackle? And he said, well, Josh and Luke, yes, Tegra is more of a tackle. And it's like, okay, well, then I think you got yourself self-settled there. Like, I, think, I think we know what the starting right, side. because if you want Josh <laughs> Fryer to be your starting right through. tackle, then that would make Tegra Shibola the backup the right backup tackle. The backup right tackle. And Luke Montgomery, Montgomery then the right starting guard, right guard. Right? What doesn't get mentioned is Enoch Vamahi and other guys like that that we, yeah. you know, who for some reason was the starter in the Cotton Bowl. Uh, which we'll never figure out. Or Zen Mahalski, like I, I mentioned Zen, but then Ryan Day like, did not say his name back to me. Um, didn't mention Carson Hinsman in the guard competition, talked about him in the center competition with, with Seth McLaughlin. So it really does kind of feel like to me they just want this spring to be about Josh Fryer and Luke Montgomery really seizing those jobs on the right side of the offensive line. And I guess if they don't, then you go back to the drawing board. But I, I kind of feel like that's where they're at. I thought today was probably one of the more like actually informative press conferences we've had from Ryan Day in a while. I like it. There was a lot of conversation about tight end. He was glowing about G. Scott, um, pr which, you know, I think we all assume that Will Kaczmarek is going to be the starter. And that's certainly not the way it sounded today. Um, and maybe, I mean, G. Scott is not your traditional inline guy, but between the conversation about the offensive line, about the tight ends, about linebacker even, I mean, he's, it was a lot of stuff that he was giving away today and then breaking down the special teams, how that's going to be split up. Like, I thought it was actually a pretty interesting discussion mm -hmm. from Ryan Day. Maybe maybe he's like, we don't want to talk about Alfred, so let's give him actually something else <laughs> yeah. to talk about. It's a little bit of a distraction yeah. ploy. Um, talked a lot about 12, my favorite personnel package and grouping for Ohio State. So I think that's a little bit of what you're talking about with G. Scott. There were there was a lot of praise for his experience and the offseason he had and wanted to continuing to build on that. The work ethic for G. Scott, I don't think has ever been questioned. It just it seems like it a little bit of hitting a wall to keep adding on mass to that frame and learn how to block a little bit better. And I don't think patient. he's, I, yeah. And I don't think he's ever going to be like elite at that. He's not going to become Luke Farrell and he's I, not going to doesn't for inches. Yeah. It doesn't. And forward. maybe doesn't need to be like, if, if that's what we've talked about throughout the off season and in pre in previewing that group is like, you're going to have to probably package maybe G Scott on the field with Will Kazmarek or even, you know, Jelani Thurman, depending on how that, all around game develops for him throughout spring but like 12 is always going to be part of ryan day's offense and i think maybe with chip kelly in the run game even more so now yeah i they're definitely going to do it like it's not it's not going away i think the thing with chip is like kind of like everything's on the table like you might see i don't know seven different personnel groupings within one game I think that might be the difference but I, yeah you're going to see a fair amount of 12 um for sure i i and i you know I'm, I'm in the camp of this team's identity is going to be running the football, I think, a, a whole lot and running it well. And I think you probably want to be in 12 if, if, if you're going to do that. So, you know, I like the mix. I, I, I would like if they could get like because I agree with you guys. I don't I don't think G's ever going to be a guy you feel super confident in is like your number one tight end inline blocker. 
I think Will Kaczmarek is that, and I would love for like one other guy to kind of emerge to give him a little bit of depth there. I, I don't know who that is, like whether it's Bennett Christian or I don't know if Jelani Thurman's ready for that or, or not. Um, so they need a little more depth, but I, I like the combination of, of Will and G and kind of their um, complementing skill sets. Burn, what else stood out for you? I mean, again, I think the special team stuff is interesting, breaking down and saying that he talked to, you know, Jim Trestle yes, yeah. and people in that satellite or that uh, atmosphere, ethos, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about. In in that world, the Trestle world. The realm? The realm of Trestle. The Trestle world. Um, and, and assigning, essentially, position groups inside of special teams to Brian Hartline, to James Laurinaitis, to McAvery. Like, I think that's smart. I think it's a really and good Keenan idea. And Keenan Bailey. Keenan Bailey. Like, it's a good idea. Um, and, and I think that it is uh, Ryan Day scoffed or stopped himself short of saying that Nick McClarty, who just committed to Ohio State about 10 days ago, will be the team's punter because I, he's the, not the, that signed. The yet. paperwork must not be yeah, in. So it takes a while for paperwork to get here from Australia, apparently. So Plus like, it travels the reverse. That <laughs> is going to be Ohio State's punter come come fall. So It's a bold pee um, right there. <laughs> he's going to be. I know. And Brandon Ennis is going to be the punt returner. I already told uh, you. I don't know about Can that. Can McClarty be the tight end? Why not? He's bigger than inline all blocker. Six, six, two, uh, you, so you you listened to Ryan Day talk about Brandon Ennis today, mm-hmm. uh, like hair. Of, I mean, glowing. You listened to that, and you didn't get the sense that they're going to find a way for Brandon Ennis to be a regular part of something. I think he's he, yeah. Turner. I think he's, he's going to be a turner. regular part of the wide he's receiver the rotation. Turner. He's a part turner too. I'm That's you. not the way I came out of that at all. Turner. I think it reinforced what I was talking about with you guys coming out of the first week and watching him move that. He's going to be a legitimate option to be the primary slot guy that allows them to be more creative with both him and Emeka Ibuka, but allowing Emeka to do things all over the field. And you're not going to risk that. If he becomes a start, the starting slot wide receiver for Ohio State, which I think is distinctly possible, I find it highly unlikely that with all the other options available, that they're going to put him back there to return punts. They put Emeka back there. Yeah. I know, and I think they've, no, I think they've moved for the last past three that. Years. <laughs> Not nonstop. They did stop because they got him. Catch, he, they that's because he kept getting hurt. That's because he, he Oh. Huh. Uh, uh. How many times did he get hurt on punt return? How many? Zero. Okay. He got hurt by uh, maybe he tweaked something on punt return. And then... I don't know that you can say zero. It was pretty interesting, however, to just hear the, the praise for Brandon Ennis yeah. today. Um, Jack Sawyer, I mean, I think you, we can just put him as the block O right now. Like, that seems... He's going to get the block. That seems he pretty clear. Block, yeah. And, I, it's, and it's it's interesting to me, Ryan Day, when he took the job here at Ohio State, the first recruit who committed to him was Jack Sawyer. And I think that there's going to be, like, their stories are so intertwined here at Ohio State, and I think it's a really cool thing that we don't really ever talk about. Because Is he going to hand the national championship trophy to Jack Sawyer first? Is that what you're I would think that's the case, yeah. Got it. Okay. I mean, that's how I, I would see that playing out. Yeah. Yeah, that, w- that would be a fairy tale story. Feel good. Local boy done good. Also, did he get asked about Jake Diebler right after talking to you about Josh Fryer? Because I'm pretty sure he had Josh they were, on the brain they when were he pretty called close. Jake Diebler Josh Diebler. And he had gone through the offensive line. He's like, Josh, Josh. Don- oh, like, oh, everybody's. <laughs> he said, we got Donovan, Josh, and Josh. As the eight, as well. I'm, I'm the eighth, or the ninth of 11 children, and eight of us have the same initials with a JDB. So I get it. I, I understand calling everyone Josh. Like my brother Josh, I call my brother Joey Josh. My friend, my brother Jamie Josh. I call my brother Josh John. I call John Josh. I call everyone Josh. So it's I easier that way. Yeah. yeah. Life is way simpler. If Maybe. you don't remember, if you don't have to remember everyone's name, and you just call everyone Josh. <laughs> We're lucky, Bill. He's never called us that on Snap Judgments, which are brought to you by Buyers Auto. Uh, a lot more to get into as this week rolls along. On Wednesday morning, we'll come right back into here to talk uh, about Pro Day on the podcast daily. So come back and join us for that. Got some quarterback conversation to get into, as well as the guys, Buckeyes who will be working out for the NFL scouts and talent evaluators. Uh, but thanks for joining us right now for Snap Judgments. That's Bill and Burma. I'm Austin. We'll talk to you later.